RF man here. Today I want to demonstrate my dual LD MOS amplifier. Uh, many of you see me demonstrate this online, performing different types of tests on the input power and output power and harmonics, etc. Uh, but today I want to talk about standing wave ratio or SWRs. Uh, I'm using an ICOM 735. One of my customers was nice enough to lend this to me, so thank you very much, Greg. Um, I've done a few tests now with this unit, and it's uh, helped me to verify the design and expand my, my testing capabilities. So thank you very much for that. Uh, so I had a customer who said, uh, I'm almost done with the amplifier. He was waiting on a couple of parts to finish his assembly. And he decided to take the input of the amplifier and scan it with an antenna analyzer. Okay, and he said, uh, you know, from 20 to 50 megahertz, the SWRs were acceptable on the analyzer. But from 20 megahertz down to, say, 1.8, megahertz on the low end he said the SWRs were were quite high in fact very high so I decided okay let me let me try the same thing so I have here a Stark 100 antenna analyzer and I went ahead and I scanned the input of my amplifier okay so here's my input side this is the input transformer Okay, this is the tuning capacitor, okay, that allows us to match reasonably well across the whole high frequency band. So I'm using a 2.70, a 270 picofarad capacitor there, silver mica capacitor. Okay, and basically, when I scanned it, I found the same thing that my customer found. Uh, between 20 and 50 megahertz. The SWRs are reasonably low, and then when I got below 20 megahertz, I was reading very high SWRs. In fact, on a lot of different ranges, I got greater than 10, and that's the capability, as you can see there, of the analyzer. It won't show any reading greater than an SWR of 10. Okay, so then I decided to go ahead and measure the SWRs with an inline SWR meter, which I have here. And I wanted to see which is the more reliable method. So I picked two reference points. Uh, basically, I'm gonna start with 20 meter band. It's like 14.15, and then just picked 14.5 megahertz as a reference point. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to the 30 meter band, we'll call that 10.5 megahertz as a reference point. Now, what I measured with the analyzer, okay, for the 20 meter band was a SWR of greater than five. And what I measured on the 30 meter band was an SWR of greater than 10. And again, that's the maximum range of my meter. So I'm gonna start here with the 20 meter band and we'll pick a, a thousand watts as a reference point. So you can see I got my bird 43. I got a 1500 watt dummy load. You can see down there, the same setup I usually use. And if we go ahead and key this up, see a thousand watts RMS okay so now we'll go over here and we'll see if the meter needs a little calibration Just bear with me here a moment there you can see we're calibrated so this bottom scale here is my SWR meter. And this is the calibration point here at the end of the scale. Okay, so we'll go ahead now and flip this over and we can actually measure 
the SWRs. I'm seeing about 1.6 to 1 there. Again, at a thousand watt output. So, comparing that to the antenna analyzer, I was measuring an SWR of greater than five. And now with the inline SWR meter, I'm measuring about 1.5, 1.6. So considerable difference. Okay, now let's go ahead and go to the 30 meter band. Or thereabouts. We'll just drop it to 10.5. It's just easier to tune that way. And let's check the output power again. Looks like we need to turn the output power up just a bit so we have the same reference point. A little too high. Go one more try at it. There's about a thousand. Okay, and let's see if the meter is calibrated again. It is, and we'll go ahead and measure the SWRs. Trying to get it to focus here, best I can. Looks like about 1.5 to 1. Okay, so remember with the antenna analyzer at 30 meters, I was measuring greater than 10. And I actually don't know how much greater because that's the maximum range of the analyzer you can see there so we get considerable differences in in our instrumentation we use the antenna analyzer we get one set of readings which are on the high side we use the inline SWR meter and we get a whole different set of readings so I believe that using the inline SWR meter is a more reliable method, a more accurate method. I can pick a reference frequency, I can keep my output power constant, and I can go ahead and compare the SWRs across the entire band. Um, so with just these two reference points, I'm doing pretty well from 10 meters um, all, the, all the way up. So we're doing reasonably well. Um, with 10 meters, we're, we're good. Okay, if we go above 10 meters to 6 meters, no problem. We go below 10 meters, I'm just using that kind of as my reference point. There's no problem. So, this is very well matched. It is broadband. And you'll be able to verify that with the SWR meter and your transceiver as well. Uh, you should get good performance across the whole high frequency band starting at uh, 1.8 megahertz and going all the way up to 50 megahertz now you know this is broadband so if we get SWR readings that are 2.0 or less that's very good performance for a broadband amplifier and you see we're able to take the frequency down to 10 megahertz and still stay around 1.5 SWRs. Um, I would expect similar performance as I decrease the frequency all the way down to 1.8. I wouldn't expect it to get above uh, two SWRs. So that's considered good performance for a broadband amplifier and shouldn't in most cases need any additional tuning on the input. Of course, that might depend on your rig and your amplifier and, and your design. Um, but for the most part, the, uh, the tuning uh, does work reasonably well over the high-frequency band. So this is RF Man. Thank you.